back up in the workshop this afternoon because we've got a lovely continuation of this April weather, which is uh, following on from the weather in January, February and March. Just rainy, drizzly, a bit cold. But we got into our bees a bit yesterday. Things are looking up, they're starting to grow now. So we need to do some frames. And uh, I'm running out of frames because I made up another 100 hives to put in circulation this year. That's gone really well, but they're all in storage now. And I put three frames in each one so that when I put my six frames in, I either add a partition or I add uh, another frame. But at least I've got a few frames in each hive ready. But the problem is, because I've done that, now I have no spare frames left, so I've got to wax them up. So just waxing up frames now, and this is how we do it here. We buy our sheets uh, of uh, standard Dadon wax, which is uh, one of the most expensive things we have to buy every year. I'm looking into making my own in time, uh, but it's something I'm going to have to learn a lot about. I've got some good contacts who've taught me a bit already, so it is possible, but it takes a lot of work. Uh, but there again, what else do you do in the winter? So getting back to what we do, basically we have this board that was built by my friend, my colleague, who worked out that it'd be better to use 24 volts. So what we do is each frame we put onto the circuit, like this, the circuit contacts, evenly distributed, and then the if you look at the, uh, you'll see the um, thing going up, that means basically the current's flowing and we're heating up the wires. So as the wires heat up, then uh, obviously the wax sheet we put on top, which is there, then slips down onto the wires and embeds itself in. Now it's nothing special, it's nothing fantastic, but it just highlights uh, a quick way of getting on the, uh, the wax sheets onto the um, frame. So they end up something like this. There you go. And we use vertically wired uh, frames. We buy these actually ready made as well. Um, it's really, really cheap for us to buy them by the thousand. So I bought a thousand last winter, I bought 1,500 last year, so this should last me most of the summer. All these, I'm going to make up, say, 250 today, wax up 250, and then that will do me for the next few weeks when we go into our hives and uh, take out our two foam-filled fillers or sort of semi-partitions that, that we had on the bees over the winter. We overwinter on seven frames. And we'll take those two out because the bees are going around the number two frame to get to number one frame to start building on that. And then hopefully they'll be built out in time to, to start giving us honey this spring. That'll be the super ring in about two weeks time, we hope. So there's always a lot to do. We're well behind this year because we've had the same weather as most of Europe. I mean, even Canada, I believe it's still well, well below the average. And most years they've got a flight two or three weeks ago. This year, everything's still hold up. Not sure if you can see that that well. You can see immediately the, the wax starts to melt. Straight away, that's fixed on. That's all we need to do. I almost gave that one too long. It's, it's really quick. So our theory is that, well, we, we know this works, that when you, um, if you leave a gap at the top, the bees will always fill that. So when you're waxing up your sheets, if you don't leave a gap at the bottom, if you just put the wax in the groove at the top there, you know, that groove that some people then pour wax into to cement it in, if you put your wax into that, you're leaving the gap at the bottom. And often the bees don't build at the, at the bottom at all. They absolutely hate building there. So if you, if you put the foundation there and leave the gap at the top, they'll fill the gap at the top, and then you get the extra row of cells at the bottom. Not always, but the majority of times. And when you're doing large amounts of frames, you will find that you spend more time when you're knocking them out quickly, you'll spend more time actually moving boxes. Well, isn't that what beekeeping is? Moving boxes from one place to another, picking them up, putting them down. You'll spend more time moving boxes when you're making frames than you are actually making frames because the, the logistics are enormous. You're just literally filling up one tray, moving it to the next. We tend to, I tend to use these uh, cauliflower crates, they're brilliant. I can get 10 or 11 frames in each one, depending on the size of the crate, and then they stack up really well. So you can stack them seven, eight high, and they, the ones underneath don't get damaged. So there's a little bit about making our frames and putting them all together.